This is Rob Pears, the Sports Zone on Anyone FM, underway for another Saturday afternoon. There are four other three o'clock kickoffs at Cardiff, Coventry, Liverpool, and Chelsea, and the big one at 5.15 today. Team news already in from Tyneside. So, who is going to be playing for Newcastle today? That uh, front three being employed by Kevin Keegan, and absolutely why not? After it worked at Tottenham last week, Martins, Viduka, and Owen Featherston have named their ground after the Radio 1 DJ Chris Moyles. Apparently, it's going to give them uh, more kudos and uh, more publicity or something. You're in the sports with Rob Pierce. It's a genetic thing, apparently. My eyes just never grew. Um, I think, uh, oh goodness me, my mum and dad had the same gene, and you need different ones for the eyes to grow or something. Since he was a baby, he's loved the radio. That's always been there. Rob Pierce. They say the pictures are always better on the radio because you can just sort of make up your own. Though I've never seen it, I still imagine the way things might look in my mind. This is IRN Channel 6. In this ear, I would have the IRN feed, a feed telling me which reports are going to come down for me to, to put out on the air. And in this ear, I would have my own portable radio with five live on so that I can get other scores. At least two things at once and talking at the same time. Challenged by Tyrone Edgar, but no one will reach him. Chambers wins it. Edgar in second place. The winning time, 10.21 seconds. The general ethos of the station is to give people in the community a chance to try whatever they want to do on the radio. They've given me the break to at least try what I've really wanted to do and it seems to be working so I think for that I'm very grateful. Where does the love come from? I don't know, I have a, a vague memory of some time in the early 90s when dad was sitting me down and he was telling me who all these players were and who were the best ones. I guess that's where it comes from. Shush, okay then. I went for 3-0 and it's 2-0 at half time so uh, we're on for it, we're on for it in the shame is I didn't put any money on it. Who thinks going to score number three? Ah, oh, you haven't got none of you haven't got your pocket money yet. Shush! <laughs> <laughs> I've got more money than you. I know you have. <laughs> exactly. Aye. You're not getting any of it. Aye. <laughs> In the club, there's a delay because obviously the, the picture has to come from the ground and then back down and then it gets uh, transmitted to the, the TV there. I'm listening on the radio, so I'm hearing it as many as 10, 11, 12 seconds between um, me hearing something and uh, them seeing it. You find yourself being forced to be very restrained at times. Very good! It's the only thing I've ever really wanted to do. You know, friends and family are biased, but they always told me that I had the voice to do it. Everything, everything to do with the radio station, it doesn't flinch him one little bit. It doesn't flinch him one little bit. It's just his living pot. And being able to commute to the radio station back again, that's what he needs to, to learn more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ian, it's a long, white... I think it's white cane with a, a roller ball on the end of it. Um, I had a social worker coming and used to go out and you just had no interest in it at all. Um, I was with your cane, you know, walking around the streets and trying to do the things like that. He still used to go out and see his friends, but very close circle. But he would never take the cane with him. He would never, ever take the well, cane. Well, he still doesn't use the cane. That no. doesn't come into it. It's a stigma they've had since they were at school. There was a group of them at school, the four of them, and they just would not use the cane. Aye. So if anyone saw you using it, it just made you look... I don't know, stupid or whatever, whatever word you want to use. They tried to be, we want to be the same as everyone else, you see. There was just a resistance to using it. No way. Too cold. Terrified the dogs. If I can't kill it and put it on a plate, it's no use to me. <laughs> I have said to them, you know, like, the gay dogs are really good. When people say that, they're going to say that's really weird because most people love, most blind people love animals, which is true, but that's oh, that not for me. That's another thing, see, that's something, it's, it's something Rob wouldn't put himself out for, you know? And it's silly, but it, it's, it's true, I'm sorry, but it's true. When was, the, when was the last time you went out on your own? Well, let me say, it would probably be... It would probably be during the last 
batch of mobility training that I had. Connie, I'm not even sure how long ago that was. It might have been sometime last year. I, I think I'm, I'm just not practicing because I'm so afraid that I'm going to get it wrong. Um, but right now, right this very minute, the motivation isn't there. You're listening to The Best of the Force with, with Rob Hares. Radio station of RNIB, the world's first radio station for blind and partially sighted listeners. Click, click here to listen now. We've been invited up to Insight Radio in Glasgow. We're going to go and guest on their lunchtime show hosted by Jill Daly. Enter, click Jill Daly. Jill lost her sight 12 years ago at the age of 19 due to a condition called diabetic retinopathy, an illness that left her completely blind in the space of two weeks. Living with sudden sight loss as a teenager posed considerable difficulty. Last year, the people who were high up in Insight came up here to suggest that they want to create um, a few satellite studios um, up and down the country where programs will be made live from different cities. If they were to set one up down here, somehow that sort of gives me something to aim towards. Hopefully by this time next year, I'll have at least got something somewhere. Insight Radio, the radio station of the RNIB. Insight Radio. You're listening to The Daily Lunch with me, Jill Daly on Insight Radio. I'm joined in the studio by my studio guest today, Rob Pierce. No, you are up here. You're making a documentary today. We've got, we've got cameras in the studio. Thank goodness I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be dreadfully nervous. But I know you're looking for a radio job at the moment. But right. Do you feel that, that maybe potential employers have, have been a wee bit kind of cagey about employing a blind person? They have a reason immediately to not employ you. I mean, we know what to say now to sort of break down these, these barriers and these sort of uh, preconceptions that people might have, don't we? We're trying to get into an industry that is is very, very, you know, everybody wants to be in the media. If you have a, a contact of some kind, that's going to help you a great deal, isn't it? But absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Stick with me, babe. <laughs> I, know, I know no one. <laughs> I'm holding you to that now. <laughs> Well, listen, we'll come back to you a little bit later on. Then you have everything except. Well, the studio's in Edinburgh. Yeah. Uh, we're all ready to go there, so uh, it's all ready to, to rock and roll. And uh, Manchester, Birmingham, London, Cardiff, and Belfast are the other ones that are on the agenda. So it's we're all still good. on the list. Oh, yeah, you're still there. Right, you're still okay, on the map. Only just. Only just Newcastle. Only just. Yeah. I've found out from the person who knows that they really do want this area to be a place where uh, the station will be. I mean, he, he used the word when, and there was no if in what he said. How did the radio show that go? It was quite good. She's what a nice lady she is. She'd be quite a catch, wouldn't she? I think. Oh, well, she would. Got to uh, tell it like it is. Yeah, it's definitely possible to sort of fall in love. I don't really think you can uh, describe it. I mean, I am. Um, she knows who she is, I mean, and um, I've known her for a very, very long time. <laughs> well, as close as close can be now. A better friend I couldn't wish for, she's my world, she really is. She's absolutely awesome. Um, well, that, that's very nice. <laughs> Sorry, true. what am I supposed to say when you say something like that? That's true. I don't like using the cane much, but... At the end of the day, I always found it very difficult, but then when I moved in here especially, I thought, well, it has to be done. I've had to learn how to handle all my finances, and I forget that Rob doesn't necessarily have to worry about that. And he's like, but I don't need to know this. And I'm like, yes, but you might, so listen. <laughs> he's like, no, really, I don't need to know. Well, we'll need to know eventually. <laughs> I mean, she's right. She's, of course, always right. <laughs> We're sort of best of friends as well. She just doesn't want to take it any further, so you have to be content with what you have. But it's always been her. He's getting more and more independent, definitely. He doesn't it's, need no. us so much now. No. There was just a resistance to using it. I don't have that anymore. Newcastle by two goals to one. Uh, in the closing stages of the uh, game uh, in Birmingham, one result already in. I think things are changing, slowly but surely. But yeah, I think I think they are changing. <laughs> 